And in business, the economic downturn in Nigeria was triggered by a combination of declining oil price and spillovers from the COVID-19 outbreak, which not only led to a fall in the demand for oil products, but also stopped economic activities from taking place when social distancing policies were enforced. The government responded to the crisis by providing financial assistance to businesses, not to households, that were affected by the outbreak. The Monetary Authority adopted a accommodative monetary policies and offered a targeted 3.5 trillion naira loan support to some sectors. I am now joined by the senior special assistant to the president, Mohamed Buhari Ajure Ngelale. Good day, Ajule. Ajuri. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Good afternoon. Me. Yes, as one with insight into the economic sustainability plan, what should citizens expect? Well, I would say, first of all, they should expect fundamentally that uh, it's going to be our people uh, that are going to be involved in an expedited process of rebuilding our nation across sectors. How this is going to work specifically is we are going to prioritize in indigenous uh, contracting with indigenous content. That's in terms of making sure that uh, not only are they indigenous companies, but that all of the labor uh, are Nigerian. Uh, and that all uh, raw materials uh, it's sourced for the rebuilding process across sectors uh, are also Nigerian sourced. Uh, we want to uh, uh, eliminate as much as possible uh, importation uh, of, of, of items that are going to be used, raw materials that will be used according uh, to uh, Presidential uh, Executive Order 003 and 005. Uh, now, in, in specific terms, we're going to do uh, cross-sectoral intervention. You recall that uh, President Mohamedou Buhari constituted the Economic Sustainability Committee chaired by Vice President Professor Yemi Oshimbajo. Uh, of course, all of the economic leaders are a part of that, the NNPC, GMP, the CBN governor, the Minister of Finance, and the like. Now, all the ministries that are involved were tasked with bringing to the table all of the most ma the maximal job-creating programs uh, and uh, policies within their MDAs uh, for immediate funding and immediate execution. Because this uh, two trillion naira uh, economic sustainability plan uh, is 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 a st is a stimulus, which means that we need to attack uh, immediately. Uh, the, the, uh, and mitigate the, the effects of uh, any potential recession as a result of what has happened uh, with COVID-19 and the global economic slowdown. So in agriculture, what we've done is working with state governments. Uh, state governments are providing hectares upon hectares in their states for us to now put out millions of young people who will be involved in a massive land clearing and cultivation scheme where we're going to be able to cultivate new value chains within the agricultural sectors like beef, like dairy, like cocoa, where we used to have uh, you know locational and regional advantage in the 60s and 70s. We want to return to that. Uh, aside from agriculture, we're moving into the most ambitious social housing construction scheme uh, in the history of the country. We're going to be building hundreds of thousands of, of social housing projects around the country built by Nigerians with Nigerian raw materials, which will be, uh, I think, when they're done, valued between about 2 and 4 million naira, which will enable us to provide mortgage payments of about 15,000 naira to 25,000 naira, so that even our most vulnerable citizens, minimum wage earners, will finally be able to afford affordable housing in this country. So All those right, are just Ajuri, two out of many different projects. Ajuri, are we, gearing, are we also gearing up for possibilities of a beggar thy neighbor policy implementation of some economies which may affect Nigeria, where we're seeing co countries having to start protecting their economies and then developing policies that may affect other um, countries as well. You know, we've, we've actually, it's a good point, uh, but we've actually been very well positioned in the sense that uh, already uh, we had been able to secure uh, several different concessional funding uh, opportunities. Uh, of course, the, the $3.4 billion from the IMF, uh, we are withdrawing our own contributions made over a period of time. We have that approval. $2.5 billion from the World Bank, uh, $1 billion of which 
will be paid uh, out to state governments on a pay-for-results basis, which means that they have to submit, uh, you know, costing estimates of what they're spending the money on, and according to the effective management and utilization of those resources, they will now be given further tranches. And then we were able to also access about $1 billion from the African Development Bank as well uh, to help us in terms of, um, you know, balance of payments and budget support. So in terms of funding, we're actually doing okay, even though the global economic environment is indeed, uh, you know, facing certain austerity measures in various places to cope. But in, in our, on our own part, uh, we have been able to effectively um, manage to secure these concessionary uh, facilities uh, to to still fund those programs uh, that we're putting in place. So I, I don't see how some of these other, uh, you know, economic policies in some of the other countries would negatively impact us. In fact, I would say very quickly that we've seen the opposite. If you look at the OPEC plus deal, for example, you had a coalition of countries, Russia, Saudi Arabia, even the U.S. and Mexico, getting involved to make sure that we can create the conditions with the production cuts so, for, so that oil prices will rise and our incomes will rise so that we can further afford the programs that we're putting in place. So we're very optimistic. All right, so finally, before I let you go, investors will look for countries with robust investment plans, competent leadership, and robust institutions. Are we preparing for this? There's no doubt about it. In fact, that, that, is, the, that is the foundation block, if you will, or the, the, the priority uh, behind the thinking uh, in the economic sustainability plan, is that we are, we are fully aware of the fact that 2021 will bring the implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. We also are aware of the fact that because of what happened with COVID-19 and understanding that before COVID-19, China was the beginning or the end of global supply chains across goods, services, and sectors. What industrialized, wealthy countries in the West have now seen is that if there's a crisis like COVID-19 in China, they can pull down the entire global economy with it. So now is the time for these Western countries to say, look, we need to diversify out of, out of China and move into other countries and create alternative manufacturing and, and production hubs uh, and all of that. And that's where Nigeria fits in, because we already have a ready-made pool of, of, of educated labor. We have a ready-made pool of highly skilled skilled labor, even if it's not uh, formally educated. And then we also have a massive market to offtake these goods and services. So we are a natural alternative. Right now, all we have to do is get our hard infrastructure in place and continue to work on the soft infrastructure that we've been doing in terms of ease of doing business. And we're going to be able to position Nigeria to be that alternative hub uh, to places like China, uh, Brazil, and India. And the economic sustainability plan is a big part of getting that done. Adjuri Ngalele, thank you so much for joining us on the news. It's been a privilege. God bless Certainly. you. Please stay safe out there, everybody. Certainly. You too.